Danielle Moralia spent her childhood in Everett, Mass., and moved on to Revere. She said, as a child, she always loved music. Um, like about every other kid at that time, she especially loved Michael Jackson, and she dressed up like Ozzy Osbourne for Halloween, and she learned how to lip sync to the Go-Go's, and her parents had her do performances. She started her real band when she was 10 years old, she said, with some friends, and three years later, she learned how to play the guitar on her own. And when I asked her how she got connected to the blues, Daniel said. As for the blues, it was a matter of starting from one thing and digging deeper and deeper, from the heavy rock guitar players, classic rock, and then the blues. I fell in love with the old acoustic blues recordings, Big Bill, Brunzi, Mississippi, John Hurt, Blind Willie McTell, Robert Johnson, and more. And then Danielle got busy at college. She went to Emerson and studied creative writing with the goal of becoming a novelist. After she graduated, she had a bad breakup, and she, although she had abandoned the guitar before during her study years of college, she said she picked it up again, started writing a lot of poetry that was pouring out of her during that period. And that's when she started writing her first songs. Her first CD came out with the title of Bad Poetry. And since then, she has another CD, and she's working on her third. And her songs have won her a number of awards, including Mountain Stage, New Song, Northeast Regional Winner, The Falcon Ridge Emerging Artist, Honorable Mention, Telluride, and more. And when I asked Danielle a little extra, something that others might not know about her, she confessed that she is a comedy geek. And she said, my whole life, I've been watching the early SNL to Kids in the Hall to Conan O'Brien and more. And she said, I know it would be cooler if I said I donated a kidney once or I like to wrestle polar bears on the side, but that's really all I got. <laughs> but I want to say you're going to see how very much she's got to offer as she begins to pour it out with her songs this morning. So glad you're here, Danielle. Are you ready to begin? I believe so. Oh, please help me welcome da Danielle Moralia. Well, I'm used to getting up at uh, 2 p.m. in the morning. <laughs> so this is... Uh, hopefully I'm caffeinated enough, I think. Black. Nothing but ice on the subway track. Straight and narrow path, got a big old crack. The ones who bought the halos want their money back. But I'm alright if you're alright. I'm alright if you're alright. So dark I can see the light Fridge is empty, cash is gone There's a beggar and a high rise with a three-piece on And everybody's saying it won't be long Cause Santa's in drag and is singing a song But I'm alright if you're alright I'm alright if you're alright I'm alright if you're alright It's so dark I can see the light Just like a rocket, no money down. Here's a last bill in my pocket, let me buy a round. 
One big boat in the muddy ground Nobody sleeps alone at rock bottom now But I'm alright if you're alright I'm alright if you're alright I'm alright if you're alright It's so dark I can see The light 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 Thank you Well, I wrote that in the dead of the winter and uh, it's very nice to, to, for it not to be winter anymore <laughs> this year was a rough winter. That, at least the January part of it was just, I just at one point I was like, I don't care what I have to do. I am going to be somewhere else next year in January. I don't care. I'm going to have gigs in another place that's warm. I don't care if I have to sing Justin Bieber covers. <laughs> I don't care if I, I have to be one of Charlie Sheen's goddesses. Well, maybe that, that won't happen, but. <laughs> you getting any guitar out there? You could probably do less of the, uh, this mic. It's, yeah, you can you can probably take that almost completely out and give and get more uh, guitar in there. This is a night in the life of uh, the loudest person in the room at any given time. I think you could you just take that uh, take that mic out completely because I think it's just going whoa whoa. <laughs> it's just causing more problems than than necessary.
Don't let me be lonely. I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely. Get off of me. Everybody knows I'm here. Everybody knows I'm here. I'm making sure you know I'm here. Thank you. so much. Well, thank you. I want to uh, I want to thank Cheryl for for inviting me here today. Let's give a big round of applause for for Cheryl. It's um It's people like Cheryl who keep the community together and and build the community and uh that's a huge part of why uh, it's a huge part of why I was really attracted to um, playing music and, and, and being out at, at uh, the open mics 
and doing that whole thing. Um, I mean, that and the big bucks that you make, you know. That's, uh, <laughs> and the groupies. <laughs> and thank you for, for being here today. And uh, let's have another round of applause for Andrew Green and for Dick Laurie. Really awesome job today. That's great. So this last tune requires a choir. Will it mess the whole thing up if I stand up for this one? Will you guys be, <laughs> will it be visually weird? <laughs> Let's also have a hand for Dan and Jim, our, our sound guys today. So this last one requires a choir, and uh, this is going to be on the new record. The new record's called Box of Troubles. We took a vote, and uh, I'm doing some pre-orders today, if anybody wants to, to pre-order that. It's going to be out at the end of this month. And on this tune, I have uh, Jen Kearney and Sam Farrell singing harmonies, and they are just powerhouse vocalist just incredible I'm so happy to have them on it to the wind it rumbled like a universal hymn changing the world was the latest thing all the kids jumped and screamed for the one they admired but no Listening, no one was listening, no one was listening but the choir. Now, the silver spoons and the charmed ones, the talking heads and the armed ones. Say they know it should be done for the harmed ones And they push it on down through the wire But no one is listening No one is listening No one is listening the choir, that's your part. No one is listening. No one is listening. No one is listening but the choir. People shouting all around. A preacher for every town. Jesus said to love one another and some other good stuff like that. But that doesn't serve to make any bellies fat. So they focus on that old lake of fire. Listening. No one was 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 listening.
listening but the choir I'm going to read you two short-ish poems, and um, if you want to talk to me about my books or CD, we can talk later. This is a poem written, um, I'll, I'll read that one next. This one is called The Shoe on the Other Foot. I saw a tall woman at the airport. Her shoes, a pair, didn't match. Maybe she bought two pair, similar but different colors, placing one shoe from one pair on one foot and the other of the other on the other. The shoe on the other foot didn't match the shoe on the other other foot. If one shoe is on the other foot, what is the other other foot? What is foot? Most people walk around on two feet, maybe not around, but about following a pattern of walkways. I have two feet. The shoe on one foot is the same as the shoe on the other foot, but different. A mirror, a reversal. I don't think one foot has an advantage over the other. They tip back and forth on equal footing. Some time ago, my boss did not trust me. Fed lies by one of my colleagues, he ate them. Soon, he was forced to eat crow. Now, he places buckets of responsibility at my feet. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. And this poem is called, it's written from the perspective of a bed, and it's called From the Bed. Teenage girl, I see you getting it stuck to you in there in this attic room, your eyes rolling in your head, your teeth gritted, your face scrunched, your body obscured by the lanky, curly-haired smoker who sweat glazes the long, unwashed sheets. A joint stubbed in the ashtray sweetens the air. His mustache scratches your lip. His saliva drips from his lapping tongue. You, you pose protestation of this big loss. He says he loves you. You are there for one reason, only one. If he were smarter, he would see it. 
He is a rusted screw, you a powdery pipe. Each thrust tears at you. You are dry inside and tears trickle down your face. Ward, you think about Hemingway, William Carlos, the cute boy who sold him the dope. Waiting for love, you want to be ready. This, you think, is preparation. You know only this much about him. He is the son of a janitor, speaks only Spanish with his mother, lives on the property of the church, finished high school at 19. You don't give him a chance. You lie, not sweating, arms at your side. You swallow the pain, too intimate to speak of. He says he's nature boy, aims to withdraw. You feel held hostage. Your aching soaks in the puddle of sheets. You suck up a disgusted kiss. You don't weigh the risk. You just know you're done with him. You wait the requisite blank-faced ten and slip your foot through a panty leg.